When flows are high enough, a small side braid cuts the inside bend of this floodplain and spills into the run below. An otherwise utterly featureless run of fine gravel, it can set up well seasonally. We take the time to apply five key fly fishing tactics as we cycle through this run a few times to show and help you recognize when and how to apply them. This video is a perfect example of why we try to have one or two years separation between filming and producing. We know that quite a few people will know exactly where this is. It's literally along a major highway. If you look at that inside series of gravel shelves coming off that side channel, they've only set up so abruptly once in the past five years, and the fish only set up in shallow water here in high numbers when this happens. Why? because the fine gravel offers little current break in shallow without these breaks and the fish hold deeper off the shelf. The main point of this video, as all our videos, isn't to show you exactly where, but to get you thinking through why fish have to be where they are, how different years of high water and gravel shifting can create or take away these features to get you recognizing these features on your trout stream. Hey guys, we're out here today and you know, every day is a different day and today as we're coming down the river, just check the flow rates and we're up about 15-20% on water flow from the dam. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we're drifting down, we're looking for rises. Um, you know, when you see that increase, you're not always super hopeful, but you stick, stick with it and you look for rises, right? And we saw a few as we pulled yeah. into this riffle, yep. right? Um, likely looking riffle for fish. And so we saw a few. And I decided, okay, you know what? I want to, I want to fish today, and <laughs> so it was my day to fish. And I decided to put on a dry dropper setup. I said, you know, few fish rising, let's put on a dry and a dropper. And because we had a bit of sun, it was a little, it was kind of a little bit in and out mm -hmm. here. We've decided that we also want to kind of sight fish as we go along, because honestly, we've seen a few fish rise in that kind of brownie green water that's close to the transition zone of the drop yeah, off, off that shelf there, off yep. the shelf and so it's like okay well let's actually sight as we go so that's our plan we're gonna fish the water and just see at, as we go and maybe target the odd yep. fish that we sight. kind of a mix between prospecting and targeting and in this with the water up about 15 20 percent now we got cloud and when the clouds over like when the when it's bright and sunny you can see that definitive dark shape yes. but in the cloudy stuff you're looking for kind of a gray on gray kind of a, um, a, a, a gray smudge on that blue gray of the water in this yes. in this light hey exactly that's exactly what you want to look for and so that's what we're gonna do and come along for the ride guys so we're out here and uh, we had just seen from our boat um, right out kind of in line with where I'm pointing my rod a fish rise. It was probably about two and a half rod lengths out here and no doubt it was a trout that was just cruising and came in right up off of that shelf. There's you can see a line again from what we call T to green and this is kind of the T or the brown kind of the brown line where the brown line meets the green line and he had come up off of that into the brown. I am gonna slowly walk up this and work that transition zone a bit with a few casts, but at the same time, really keep my eyes out. Yeah, you just, you know, you don't know where these fish today, again, we do not have any kind of consistent hatch. We've seen a few March Browns, seen a few olives, quite a lot of midges, but you just don't have a really good, you know, sense on what's going to transpire, but we know that the fish are here and it's just a means of, okay, what are they going to take? And I'd love to intercept one that might be cruising on these shallow flats. And as always, I'm really making a point of simply going as quietly and smoothly with my feet as possible in this circumstance. Um, you know, trying not to grind out too, too many rocks as I move. Because yeah, you don't, you know, you, you want to eliminate as many vibrations as you can. 
it's it's actually not easy at all seeing my dry fly. Yeah. I just seen where it landed. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, because you're looking up in glare and I've yeah. got this gray poly post you and you've got a way different angle there. Yeah. It's a little easier when you're actually looking, guys, across. from the side. So I'm going to start to work across here a bit. Again, downstream then just to make sure. Yeah, there we go. There's a fish. Had to be one around. <laughs> right on. He's a jumper. Yeah, nice rainbow, guys. Healthy looking thing. Well, I want to keep working up here on this inside seam. There, I can just see that it's coming into a nice zone. Ah, I heard that rise behind me. Yeah, Don't think it had much size, but. Okay. So, hey. oh, there we are. Yep. Ah, nice. Yeah, better fish for sure. About the same size as the last one. Real spunker. You got that, Dave? Yep. A awesome. There you go. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, that whole line out there is working well, but once again, I don't want to lose sight of what could be right off of this honey of a seam right in front of me because there's quite a transition to depth in there. Oh, thought that fly went down, but that was a rise, eh? I'm going to get to him, but I don't want to miss this stuff in between me and him. So I can see a gray smudge, guys, actually right out in here. Um, just keeping my close eye on it as I go out there, but that's where I want to get my first cast. He's not, he's not too far out here. That might just cover it. Uh, he might be a little further out than that. So I'm just going to kind of keep edging. Yeah, I think he's, okay, I think I got my eye, uh, eye on him here. Okay, right in there. That should cover him. No. Oh, yep. There's a fish. Don't know if that was him, but definitely a nice one. That's awesome. Right on. Should be able to surf him in. Yeah. There we go. Now we're back into awesome. Beautiful colors on that one. There we go, guys. Yeah, really pretty. Pretty female. So guys, what was really neat about that is I decided to kind of change my angle of where I was standing in the river and I came further out to the shore, just right behind me here, so that I could kind of get a bit more of a side view as to this, you know, this really good riffle run um, that's right here. And the best part of it, because you can see a rise of gravel leading into the deeper trough of the riffle run, and then kind of another rise of gravel on the other side of it. And I just knew that the only way I was gonna sight anything or see any kind of out of place, you know, smudge, of any kind was to get on the side because straight upstream as you can see is just complete glare and you're not going to see into that so yeah that's how I approach that one okay guys so I'm going to keep at this kind of looking and playing the water here there's one that I think I'm going to come down to Ooh, I can't see that dry fly what's going on there I got to dry that off Hi guys, so I actually just finished changing up my nymph to a nymph with a slightly smaller tungsten bead. Um, what was happening is between a slightly wet, because I had been using it for a while, uh, mayfly, dry fly indicator, um, the, the nymph I had on was just sinking and it just wasn't a good combination. So I had to change that up and I'm just going to keep going at it here. Right there, isn't that one? Right there, about a rod. Right there? No, right there. Oh, a okay. Rod up from you. Okay, I'll give the, give that a go, hey? Yeah. Right, right in. You're just outside of them there. Oh, okay, go here ahead. we go, a little shorter. Where'd he go? And right in there. Was, now he's not. Ah, okay. <laughs> They're moving again. They're moving hard, aren't yeah. they? Okay, so try to be faster with my cast. Slightly. Up and out? Just by a foot or two. I gotcha. Okay, here we go. Yeah, in there. 
Oh, yeah, there we go. There he is. Nice. Thanks, Dave. That was all you for what you saw. It's not easy in this light, not by any means. If we had sun, that'd be a different story. Big different story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? And that's really neat. So you got that, Dave? Um, I do now. Awesome. Okay, letting her go. Dave thinks he's got another one here, so I we're going. I definitely have another one. We're going looking. Yeah, that might be right out there. Right? Yeah. I think yeah. So. It's moving. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Here we go. It's hard to look though, and look at your dry fly. That's the hard part. That is. You know. Um. Just gonna keep kind of slowly following you because I know you got your eyes where I can't see up here. Yeah. And just up, right yeah. At that angle. Okay, here right we go. Here, a little bit to the out and to the right. Yeah, just outside of that. Okay. But, yeah. I'll let that drift in next Ooh, cast. Yeah. Right. Okay, do it again. Okay, here we go. So just outside of that. Yep. There you go. Right in there. Oh yeah, nice on the dry. <laughs> good, better fish too. Really good eye, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Wow. That's brilliant, hey? Yeah. And what I decided to do, guys, is I actually changed up my dry to something that I could see better because so few fish were actually taking the dry. So I just put on a little stonefly pattern. Um, I guess it's about a size 10. Um, but again, poly wing floats well, and uh, it was definitely gonna keep keep on top. Yeah, and just be able to uh, drift that nymph through. But yeah, this guy wanted the dry, gotta love that. That's awesome. Come on, come on, keep bringing it to the net, in the net, nice. Yeah, just a heavier fish, that's awesome. Awesome, really nice fish, hey? What, what's going on is that you're just trying to feather that? Mm -hmm. And what I wanna see, you're in shallow riffle here. Just pound it and then pull that back, oh. set your drift, okay. high stick, you're right on the fish. Okay. You can do anything you want. Yeah. Okay. If the fish if the fish are there, whatever you do over here, it doesn't matter. You could you can sit here and skip rope for all it matters. But you have to mend. See that? High stick. Because the current between you and the fly is going faster and you get there, now I'm high stick. Look at that drift. Yeah. You know, it's a killer drift. It's funny because, of course, subtle. you're right. You're absolutely right about this. I had it in my head that I might get dry fly tags because, well, you might. Lot, but I might. But e I suppose even with the now. drag, I'm saying with the drag. But yeah. No. Okay. Let's. Got it. Yeah. Rock that I'm looking at. Yeah, you so. just covered it. it. Just It's on it right Not now. Not this you know, one out, out there. there. Oh, okay. It's right, right there. Okay. Broad length from you. Okay, let's do that. Right in there. Okay. Coming down to it. Probably let it a bit much, but. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Too much. Inside. Inside. There we go. Yep. That's Definitely that. There, right in there. Oh, he looked. You Did see he? That? Yeah, he. Yep, oh, yep, yeah. Yep. Oh, he took the nymph. Yeah, yeah okay. Definitely. Just outside. So we still of that think that there is a fish just outside of this white rock. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that is me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. <laughs> Alrighty, well we're on one. <laughs> I wasn't really getting the cast so good there, but yeah, as Dave said, this is a nice fish. Um, I think I was just choking up because it was so close to me, which is silly, but in this circumstance, trying to get a reach when it's close, um, again, I just wasn't quite getting the reach, but that's okay. What Dave was also saying is I needed to high stick it there through. And then, of course, as we're talking about all that, this fish takes a nymph. So, you know, it's another nice fish. Yeah, <laughs> they're stacked in here, people. They are stacked in here. Come on, get that head up. Yep, yeah. head up, head up, yeah. in the net. Wow, yeah, just another healthy rain or brown, eh? That's Jeez, that's awesome. Okay. Right on, guys, so, right on, okay. And away she goes. Nice female brownie. Wow. That's pretty cool, you know, when you're in a in a riffle like this that's stacked with fish. And what is that? Maybe three or four rainbows and two browns? Well, that was wicked awesome, guys. Yeah, I've got to 
Dave just picked off one instantly. He saw the smudge and yeah, I got Another that one. cast. Right you got one? There. Yeah. Far side of the seam right out there. Okay. Okay, just on the other side of that seam at that line. Sun's oh, coming out, okay. so we're getting a bit more light. There's a out of place dark it's amazing there. and i'm going to point this out dave has another well, you know basically toes. yeah he's got now. another good foot above me okay and definitely that's why he sees more in here so the really cool thing that's happening is the sun's yeah. starting to come out wicked and while that's counter to a hatch you can start that's, to that's see that's a fish right there yeah is it I, not? Would, I think so okay dave just seen one right somewhere in here maybe a touch further but We'll okay, see. let that drift a little bit. You're gonna start dragging. Okay, right and now. here we go. Far side instead of working from your inside. Right in there. He rose, probably taking a midge there. Okay, I'll keep working this just a little more. Right in tight of me. I'm not seeing anything in there though. It looks oh, like, wait, oh, wait, wait. there it is, right on top. Just came and snagged it, eh? Isn't that amazing? Awesome. Might be a better fish. I couldn't see. Did you see? It's a good fish. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely uh, <laughs> got some gumption anyway. Jeez. Yeah, it is. It's a good one. Definitely a good fish. I can see that. There we go. Might be free now of the dropper tippet, you know? He's actually in the dropper tippet now. It, eh? Yeah, that's what happened. There were so many rolls out there in that deeper water. Let's try to scoop it in there if I can. Yeah. And in the net. Thanks so much. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sweet. Wow. That's a sizable brown. Yeah, Not at all what I expected. No. <laughs> okay. What a gorgeous fish, guys. Yeah, I did not expect a, what, 21 inch, probably uh, male brownie to come and eat that dry fly, but that's what happened. So guys, that was really sweet. I guess the, the big thing there for me was just continuing to actually work that trough zone. Um, you know, I needed to work kind of more the inside and I just kept at it. And the funny thing is, yeah, we didn't see a fish in there. We weren't sighting anything, but we had seen a few rises before. And I think the more my dry fly just drift through that zone, you know, that brownie was in there and he came and took a look and, and took it and it was wonderful. So yeah, you, you gotta love that. Um, I didn't expect it, honestly. Uh, I was thinking more, mostly rainbows through here, but uh, yeah, take that every day of the week. Just loved it. All right, so Amelia's done a hell of a job just on the top end of this shelf with a dry dropper and uh, just a little a copper t uh, pheasant tail or hare's ear nymph, that kind of thing, and picked off quite a few nice fish. So now I thought, well, you know what? Let's finish this cycle of this run, drop back a little bit. I've gone five feet down to a size 10, a double oversized tungsten nymph, pheasant tail nymph. So, you know, I, I'm down. And then about 10 inches above that, I've got a little copper tail pheasant tail. Um, yeah, it's about a size 14. And the idea is we got squalid nymphs. You got some golden stones that might be coming on eventually. Um, you know, some March browns, blue and olives, those kinds of things are out here. And I'm just going to be, like I say, five feet down to my lowest uh, fly and about four, just over four feet to my top fly. That actually might be a little bit too deep, but I'm just going to work through the scene that comes out of the shelf off the shelving riffle and just see if I can dead drift and get anybody to have a look and take pity on my flies. Okie dokie. And this bit of a longer pause, longer delay there, a little bit of a tailwind. Let's just work that and just see if anything comes off that deeper trench out there. Well, there's a rise way out in the flat. Just one big mother and gob of that <laughs> chartreuse indicator. I'm not as confident in this water right here, even though I know that there's fish here. I'm just, I'm really confident on the stuff right up where this seam starts and you know, I like action, so let's let's put it way out there. I'm not working this too methodically. 
at this stage because I, I know where I want to be most. I'm not ticking bottom, which is okay because when you have emerging blue winged olives, emerging March browns, you're kind of get hoping those fish are looking up. There we go, right up this seam, just along that seam. And I bet you I start ticking bottom there now because it's not as deep as I think out here. And again, amend, sacrifice two seconds, or one second of drift to gain. You could conceivably drift the entire run now just by upstream mending into the, into the current. But I don't want to do that because there's not really all that much stuff that I'm terribly interested in right through there, to be honest with you. Personal preference. There's fish there, absolutely. And just, you can tell I'm biasing up into the Riffley stuff here. It's pretty, pretty obvious that I'm, what, what water I'm targeting, what water I'm biasing. I extend behind me, extend, pause, and just place. Again, I might be a little bit deep. There he was. Yeah, he's there. Always interested to see which fly this fish eats. Uh, I think it's the top one, to be honest with you. And it may well be a Rocky Mountain whitefish. Yeah, he's going to dog me because that's what Rockies do. And being a Rocky, no doubt I'm going to have a huge tangle in my net in about two seconds. <laughs> How do I know these things? Little munchkin. Got it? Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Uh, wicked. Nice. Awesome. Okay, well, Rocky's on the board. Right now we have a bunch of March Browns coming off. But I know March Browns and Sunshine don't go together that well. So I don't expect the hatch to last that long, um, if anything. And my problem is I've got a double nymph rig set up. And I got sucked in because Amelia worked through this. And I'm like, okay, now what? Uh, are these fish, are these bugs going to keep hatching? My instinct says no. So because my instinct says no, that tells me that we've got emergers, which this nymph setup should take care of because there's only been a few fish rising upstream, but there should be fish eating the emergers more than, than, than the uh, rises we're seeing. So I know I've got a fly, a nymph. No, that was one. I know I've got a nymph that's got a really good size match to the nymphs of March Browns. So instead of trying to quickly change my whole setup to a dry fly setup, I'm just gonna rely on these fish you're gonna eat that nymph. Because there's not lots of fish rising. Okay, so I am changing, I'm changing a few things. Um, yes, I've got basically four feet from my bottom fly. You know, there's one fly, two flies, and then my indicator. Now I'm gonna, you, you would think, well, Dave, you're just, you're just gonna nymph this run. Well, no, actually what I'm gonna do, because I nymphed up and didn't have a lot of success. Now the sun is out. We just had those March Browns come off and my spotty senses was, Dave, don't, don't change everything. And because I didn't change everything, I, I, I have a nymph set up and I've got something that looks like a March Brown nymph. And now I can sight fish and I'm gonna just tight line, tight line nymph this, raise that off the water and just wait to see if anybody Hits that. Oh, that was a take. So I'm using my, um, I'm augmenting my nymph setup to kind of a cider setup. And I know that there's a fish or two around here. And I think that there's one right beside me here. Let's see if I can sight them right in. Yep, that's the one. I just saw that one. And it was like, well, I just, let's check nymph it. So I've changed from a deep nymphing setup. That's the benefit of that strike indicator wool. I can just slide that down four feet and now I've got a cider. And that's how quickly you can change those things. From deep nymphing to sight fish, check nymph tight line nymphing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Okay, he's, he's ready to go. Yeah, she is. Fly popped out. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Wicked. So that's how fast that all changes, hey? Isn't that amazing? Okie dokie. So now I'm back. I have another five, ten minutes for sun here. And 
all I'm doing is walking slowly out and looking for movement. I'm looking for smudges. I'm oh, there's one right there. I think. Um, I think that's a fish. Ah, oh, geez, where'd he go? So, if I'm asking the question, where'd he go? Guess what? That's probably a fish. So again, I'm just gonna get this upstream of me, and I'm just gonna kind of feel, feel, feel. Watch that. It's more of a sighter than anything else. Oh, that was him. Okay. And right up in here, get that down. Got a double tungsten nymph on that. And going by feel, anybody? Just going to behave a bit better. There's definitely, there's a fish right there. Will he eat? Let's just nymph that, not tight line it. Just let that pause if he's going to eat it. See how short a line I've got going on here. Yeah, that's a fish right, right in here. Right there. Right just gonna keep feeding that fish right there uh-huh that guy rose pretty good out there okay right here now this guy's really on the feed right beside me here just out oh, there he goes out okay so I just tied on a little size um, 14 or 16 little Daiichi hook with an oversized tungsten bead nymph just a pheasant tail and this there's a fish right here right off my rod tip see if he wants to eat that no he's just right underneath that indicator right now right there oh geez that was dumb that was aggressive <laughs> but that's the point um <laughs> they're right beside me <laughs> yeah there's no there's no doubting about that oops okay i think i still have a fish right here um yeah i do he's again <laughs> Um, make sure that fly line it is right okay pull that back walk it in there tight line it right in oof i thought for sure he was going to eat that it's so right in here hey just going to tight line that crazy this fish doesn't want to eat well my fly anyway yeah he just he just ate an emerger i could just see him rise up in the water column on something there so moving fish off the shelf, off the shelf, in, all around, and then the sun and the cloud pulsing isn't always your best friend when you, and that reflection off that bank over there is actually what's killing me right now. Because um, it's really hard to see here if you got, you know, it's like somebody with the car, car headlights coming at you and you're like, hey, uh, excuse me, and it doesn't work. There he is right here, right off underneath my indicator, right in there is where that fish is. Roll it, roll it, and how about we just go up here and see what this does for us. I think I see a smudge right in here on the inside, so I'm gonna work that. Oh, that was a rise. There we go. Okay, right in it off that. See if he eats my nymphs. Yep. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Ah, he rose and it was like, well, I'm not changing to a dry fly. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh. Sweet. Oh, he got you. <laughs> yeah, I had that coming. She says, that's what I think of you. There we go. Got her? Awesome. Yeah, anytime. There we go. Okay, guys, uh, we do want to talk to you about our Patreon page. And the reason we do... Um, we can't just go and make, make a living off doing YouTube stuff, and nor do we want to just ask you for money. Um, you know, we want your support. Yeah, absolutely. But that's why we've put up um, really our Patreon page. Uh, what we're doing there is every single video like this one, we're breaking it down to time codes and the, the behind the scenes considerations, what's happening, our fly patterns, tippet, leader length, rod setup, and what about that fish? Uh, you know, to help you, to really help you understand what's going on. We've also got our master classes. So, you know, there's a couple videos, guys, where we really get into it and we get in depth into everything that we look at from trout behavior to casting to our approach to the conditions and how that affects the day and then what you'd see at other times a year. So that's another thing we do. Yeah, and as we get along here, the other cool thing that we're adding to Patreon this starting this month and we're gonna roll out over the next year and a half 
is our master course on fly fishing small trout streams. What we're asking you to do is consider supporting this channel uh, on YouTube by and everything that we do on Instagram and Facebook and go over to our patreon.com slash Jensen Fly Fishing, sign up and you'll get everything. It's, a, it's an exchange that's going to allow us to continue what we do uh, and improve this channel and continue to share all of the things that we do to help you with your trout stream fly fishing.